What's up guys, ladies, gentlemen, Channel Volage is Data here with another gameplay, and welcome to the seven tips of Battlefield you probably don't know. Starting off with number one, if you ever come across a locked door and you don't know how to get into it, very simple. Take a high explosive such as dynamite or the rocket gun that you could find in support class and you can blow that door clear off the hinges, allowing you and the rest of your team to go crashing in and taking out the rest of the enemy. Now, if you do not have this support class equipped, it's simple. Just tell the person who does in order to bust through that door and you'll be in there in no time. Tip number two, bayonet actually does hinder your weapon. Now, Battlefield, I mean, or I should say DICE, has a really bad ex way of, of telling this to you because they don't tell you in-game. Keeping the bayonet will actually increase recoil and increase the ADS, the aim down sight time for your weapon. So if you do not charge people on a regular basis, just simply removing that will make your gun slightly better. Now again, it's just slightly better, so it's not going to be like a nighttime or daytime difference. However, it could be the edge that you need in order to win that gunfight. The third tip would be, as opposed to beta, when you are cavalry, you are able to actually now slash left and right while riding the horse. In the beta, I believe it was only right that you were able to slash. I could be wrong on that. However, you now can slash both directions. Tip number four is knowing when and how to aim your rocket gun. Now, at a specific angle, the rocket aim will actually ricochet off the tank, if you're shooting at the tank, of course, and not hurt the tank at all. Now, most people won't be able to always position their tank in such an angle that allows for this to happen. However, keep in mind, if it's positioned at a specific angle instead of what I would assume would be perpendicular, you can actually have a ricochet off and not cause any damage. So do your best to always have it where you're at a perpendicular angle at it, and you should always be able to deliver damage to the tank that you are shooting. The next tip on destroying vehicles is simply focus fire at the vehicle that you're shooting at. What I mean by this is if the, we if the vehicle has particular weapons on it, shoot at the weapons. This will help disable the weapon and also disable the tank. If it can't defend itself by shooting back at you, then you're able to take it down a lot more faster than where it, if it actually had weapons to shoot at you. Keep that in mind the next time you face a tank because they're everywhere and I hate them. This next tip goes out to all those mortar users. If you ever got tired of like going back to the screen where you have to aim it and you see a lot of people in one position and you just want to rapid fire on them to succession until you're completely out of ammo but you keep going back to that screen. Well if you're tired of doing that just simply spamming the right trigger or I guess you just say the shooting button depending on whether PC, Xbox or PlayStation just rapidly pressing that will allow you to skip that screen and just fire at the same exact spot in succession. This last tip is for all you dead people out there. For every person that dies, and I'm a medic 99% of the time, so this one eats at me pretty bad. If you look down to the lower left hand corner, a lot of times, especially if you're near your teammates, you will see a blue or green if they're in your squad medic icon, and it will tell you a number with meters. You know, so that's telling you how far away they are. Keep in mind that even though they're far away and it's taken a little bit of time, they could probably still be working towards you. They're just having to take care of the bad guy that took you down or reviving other people or giving other people some health to, you know, to keep them from dying. So don't just automatically hold down the X button and respond as fast as you can because there could be someone to come help get you up. So if you do care about your KD, waiting an extra 15, 20 seconds could be the difference between a death or continue your life. On, to on that topic, I'll also add that it doesn't matter if you hold down the X button or not. If you die and automatically hold it down to go respond, you'll still have to wait at least 10 seconds before you can get back in after dying. So you might as well wait that 10 seconds on just staring at your dead body hoping someone comes by and revives you. Well, go ahead and let me know down below in the comments section if you know any other tips that I didn't mention because we're still learning this game and I would like to know as much as I possibly could. And as always, have a nice day.